Now, around the hallowed halls of Tech TV, we have avid PC fans and console gamers. Many of them believe in the PC, but they believe that the arena is too early to, to call at this point in terms of whether PC is going to win out over consoles. Adam Sessler continues our cover story, though, with a look at why he thinks PC games will probably be the survivor. Adam? Yes, thanks, Michaela. Now, what we're going to look at right now are one of the most ubiquitous games you can find on the PC, and that's the first person shooter. You've seen that these are the games like Quake. These also tend to be the most controversial and violent games. They are popular enough and have enough of an avid following that they've been made and transferred over to the console with some very interesting results. But let's first look at what the PC game is like. This is Quake 3 Arena right here. Now, as you play the game, you're working in this first person environment, and you're in a very tense situation having a battle. What you need in this is some very quick responses. Now, as you can see with the controller, what I'm using to aim with is my mouse, which is a nice, sensitive thing. I can go up, I can go down, I can go left, I can go right quite easily. It's intuitive as I want to point something. I'm moving with my left hand. Oops, look at that. I'm moving with my left hand using the W, A, and S, and D keys. This is uh, one of the more typical setups. This just allows me to move only on a 90 degree axis, and then I can affect that axis by using the controller. This is, allows you to act very quickly and have very quick responses in the game, and it's traditionally how you play these first person shooters. Okay, let's move over now to the console. Now, this is Quake 3 Arena for the PlayStation 2. More or less, it's the same. You can see it's graphically different. We'll touch on that in a second. Now, if you can see it with the controllers, I'm strafing with one analog stick, and I'm using the other one to aim. This does work, but you don't have anywhere near the ability to, to respond as quickly as you need to, especially if someone comes up behind me and tries to blast me. If I turn around, look how slow I'm turning around at 180 degrees. In a game like this, it's all about quick responses, being able to sort of get a bead on your opponent's heads. You can fire a rocket into them. And it's, people do enjoy this on the consoles. I'm not saying that this isn't a good game. But if you really want to be a connoisseur of this type of first-person shooter, you really start to see those detractions when you play it on the console. Now, there have been some very successful console first-person shooters. The, the, the best example is the game GoldenEye that was on the N64. I think what makes a game like that work so well is that was designed only for the N64. It took into account a lot of the limitations. It was built around your inability to move too quickly from one direction to another. Now, some of the other things you obviously can see between the games is the graphics. The graphics right here in the PC version of Quake 3. I keep on dying. Look at that. You might think I wouldn't know what I'm doing. Now, Quake 3 Arena, the graphics are terribly impressive, and this is one of the great draws. These are always the most graphically demanding games for the PC because you want to create an environment that's so immersive that you really believe from this first-person perspective that you're in there with a bunch of creatures blasting each other with various armaments. Now, let's once again go back over here to our PS2, and let's continue this game. There we go. Now, you see, it does look good, and it looks good for the PS2, but this is nowhere on the level of sharpness. Now, what also you want to play multiplayer, since this doesn't play online, you have to split the screen up into four different directions, and then you lose even more graphical uh, detail, and you're looking at what other people are doing. So you lose a lot of the experience that really is true in a very pure PC game uh, uh, experience, and so I think just for those games alone, you're not going to see PC gaming going anywhere anytime soon. Back to you guys. Well, you know, Adam, that sort of begs the question, does there have to be a winner? I mean, do you have to pick the PC gaming, uh, the PC platform or the gaming console? It sounds like they can both PC um, code yeah. this. The, the, the real battles between those consoles. Um, one, one big thing to, to bear in mind is that the PC, the people who make the PC games don't need to convince you to buy PCs to be able to play their games. Sure. Whereas the console game makers, they have to they also make sure that you're actually going to have the console that can play your game on that. It's a whole different business dynamic, and they don't usually find themselves going head-to-head -head that much. But uh, if everyone starts playing consoles, you might see fewer people playing PC games. It'll have to refine itself. 